before we get into the major part of the video, I did want to touch upon a smaller, semi-interesting tidbit in regards to a Reanimator sequel, with that being Island of Reanimator. Sometime after Beyond Reanimator, Brian Usna got the idea for Island of Reanimator, which would have been inspired by Island of Dr. Moreau, with Wes taking over the Moreau role. It involved him having a bunch of failed experiments on this island. However, it was only an idea Usna had, and it never got farther than that, despite being a pretty ingenious idea. But with that, we get into the main event with House of Reanimator. This was one of the more famous cancelled films, as it was pretty close to getting greenlit and made. The movie originated with Brian Usna, who really wanted to make another Reanimator film after the negative reception of Beyond Reanimator. In around 2004, he went to the original's director, the late, great Stuart Gordon, and the original screenwriter, Dennis Paoli, with the idea for House. It struck a chord with both of them, but especially Gordon, who was a big fan of the political commentary in the film. Since the film would be a major commentary on the Bush administration, Gordon and Paoli were really anxious to get the movie off the ground. The trio wanted it to be a sequel to Beyond, but wanted the dynamic to be very similar to the original Reanimator, with Herbert West and Dan Kane's relationship being the focal point of the film. The film went through 12 treatments over the course of 7 to 8 years. With this, it also covered the two administrations of those 7 to 8 years and had a different story outlined for both. According to Paoli, the original hook for the film was, It starts with Dick Cheney in a meeting with the billionaire backers of the Bush administration and a number of oil billionaires from the petroleum industry, which turns into a celebratory party because they have gamed the system and gotten almost carte blanche backing from the administration, as oil companies have from multiple administrations. During the party, he overdoes it and has a heart attack and dies. However, Yuzna, while being very supportive of Gordon's vision, was apprehensive of making the characters actual political figures, but instead make them over-exaggerated characters like with most satire films, as well as wanting the hook to be more so that the actual president dies rather than the vice president and have it be more of a generic template president rather than an actual president. As time went on and the administration is really changing, they went back and revised the script more and more until it was about what Usna was really looking for. Herbert West enters the picture when one of the people in the administration is aware of him and his serum, so they want him to reanimate the vice president after his heart attack, or in later scripts, is the president after an assassination attempt. But West has essentially disappeared after the events of Beyond, so they kidnap Dan Kane instead and force him to try and make West's serum. Harkening back to the idealist of the original movie, Dan doesn't want to do it as he has since rebuilt his life after dealing with Herbert West. However, the administration eventually forces him to do it, or in some treatments, threaten his family to force him to do it. So, Kane tries to do it as best he can, and chaos, of course, ensues. He can't figure it out, so he has them bait West to come back by submitting a press release that Dan is making a new serum. With West being the egotistical narcissist that he is, he falls for the bait and comes into the script. He accosts Stan for trying to steal his serum and eventually does it himself. The initial reason that West agrees to do it is that they give him the best lab he's ever gotten and free to do whatever he wants to try and recreate his serum, as well as working with Dan again. And that was pretty much act one in one of the main treatments. In one of the original treatments, after the vice president dies and Herbert tries to bring him back, eventually the first lady is killed and the president is killed and eventually everyone who shows up for a press conference is a reanimated corpse. It's also been stated that zombie soldiers were an idea at one point because the war was costing too much for the country, so they get West to reanimate casualties of war. But since that had been done before while they were developing the script, the idea was eventually canned. Another idea was the fact that in the reanimator films, the dead reanimate pretty pissed off and the power brokers try to find a new way of controlling them, since money wouldn't work anymore. The relationship of Dan and Herbert would be very similar to the first two, but there would be a new conflicts with Herbert wanting to move forward and constantly trying to make his serum better, with Dan looking into the past with how many lives this serum has wrecked, and realizes that West has now become more powerful because of him. That conflict eventually brings us to the ending, where one dies and the other brings them back. They dabbled with both endings with Dan dying and Herbert bringing him back, and Herbert dying and Dan bringing him back, but it has been stated that it wouldn't have ended the series if Herbert did in fact die. 
Gordon's ideology was to go all the way no matter what, and that was very present in this script. Why did this ultimately not get made? Well, it was mainly blamed on money, as this would have been a higher budgeted reanimator film, as well as the fact it was very political heavy, so it's assumed that producers wouldn't have wanted to touch it. There are treatments out there, but I don't know if there are full scripts that have been released to the net yet. The info has been very hush-hush about this film, despite it probably never going to get made. So outside of an interview with Paoli, there hasn't been a ton of info about it, with the exception of William H. Macy starring as the president and Combs and Abbott returning as Weston King respectively. My thoughts on the film are mixed. I think it could have certainly been an interesting movie, but if they went with more of an attack on the Bush administration, it would have dated the movie incredibly. If they did go for more of the generic president with Bush implications, I think it would have been better and more interesting. Dated movies aren't exactly bad, but here, unless it was done extraordinarily well, it wouldn't have been that good. But on a whole, I do think that Island of Reanimator would have been a more interesting movie and would have made more sense. Herbert West being a recluse on some island while some poor soul happens upon it and has to deal with the weird zombie experiments? That sounds fucking awesome! And personally more in tune with the Reanimator franchise than working for the government. But that's just my thoughts. Stay tuned for tomorrow with another great cancelled film.